Hi, Rudy Winston from Canon USA with our tutorial series on the EOS 6D Mark II. The EOS 6D gives you extensive autofocus control in its custom functions menu. In fact, there's a whole group of custom functions labeled autofocus. Most of the functions here are present on some of our higher end cameras. So if you're coming to the 6D from a camera like one of the recent 5Ds or a 7D Mark II, you'll have seen a lot of these before. But if you are coming from an older EOS digital SLR or from an entry level camera like one of the Rebel models, there'll be a lot of good information here for you. There are three primary aspects of autofocus control in your custom functions menu and we're going to have a separate video episode for each of these. They are AI servo AF control, focus point management, and the viewfinder display. Now there's one custom function setting called AF micro adjustment that we're not going to talk about here because there's a very detailed downloadable guidebook which you can get completely free of charge on Canon USA's Digital Learning Center website. The first group of custom functions deals with AI servo AF control. AI servo AF is the focus setting you'll use to tell your camera to focus continually on moving subjects. Custom function one is called tracking sensitivity. And what this does is tell the system if you are continuously focusing on something and there is a sudden change in what you're focusing on, if something steps between you and your subject, will the camera try to refocus on that new object quickly or will it give you additional time to get back on the subject? By default, the camera gives you a small cushion of time to find your subject again and continue focusing upon it. But you can change how this works with the tracking sensitivity. If you turn this to the locked on setting, you're telling the system, give me even more time to find my original subject if there's some kind of an interference when I'm tracking it. And conversely, if you set this to responsive, you're telling the AI servo AF to refocus immediately on any new subject that it sees. Custom function two is called Excel decel tracking. And what this one does is you're telling the servo focusing system the type of movement at the subject to expect. At the zero setting, which is the factory default, the system is expecting relatively continuous and steady movement. Now, it doesn't matter what that speed of movement is. It can be a person walking. It could be a Formula One race car. In either case, you're telling the system, hey, just expect steady, relatively continuous movement. But we know that not all types of moving subjects move continuously and steadily. You may be photographing wildlife or sports where the action tends to kind of stop and start and speed up and suddenly slow down. If you set it to the plus one or the plus two setting under XL D-cell tracking, you're telling the AI servo AF to expect changes in subject speed and to be able to react to those changes quickly. Custom function three, AF point auto switching. Now this one only affects you if you're set to an AF area setting where the camera is using multiple focusing points and will switch them automatically. The automatic point selection where all 45 points are active, the large zone AF or the zone AF. By default, the camera has an algorithm to give you pretty smooth and steady switching of one focus point to another if a subject moves laterally across the frame. But you can speed that action up by setting it to the plus one or the plus two setting on the AF point auto switching. Custom functions four and five deal with release priority. How quickly will the camera fire the shutter? Custom function four is first image priority. And what we mean by that is if you're shooting a sequence of images, the instant you fully press the shutter button down, will the camera fire the shutter immediately or will it give time to allow the focusing system to confirm that that first shot is in sharp focus? Again, there's a default setting where the camera allows a little cushion of time to ensure sharpness. But if you want, you can either speed it up by moving it towards the release priority side, or if you want to ensure that that first shot is as sharp as possible, even if it means that you had to wait a little while for it to fire, you can set it to focus priority. Second image priority is a little bit of a misnomer. Really what we mean is in a continuous sequence, for the second and any subsequent shots in that continuous sequence. Do we want the system to fire at the fastest possible frames a second rate? 
Or if we need to, do we want the system to slow down to allow the AI servo autofocus more time to confirm sharp focus from shot to shot? You have a choice here, once again, with focus priority or with release priority. There are two additional custom functions that deal with autofocus, but that don't deal directly with AI servo operation, but we do want to talk about them here. Custom function six deals with your AF assist beam when you're using a speed light in one shot autofocus. And custom function seven is lens AF drive during focusing. In other words, if you're focusing on something with one shot or servo, and you're either way too close for the lens to be able to focus upon it, or you're focusing on something distant, but it has very little detail or texture. The camera can't really focus upon it. Do you want the AF system to drive the lens all the way to near focus and back before it gives up? Or do you want it to simply alert you in the viewfinder that it can't focus and save you a little bit of time so that you can refocus on something a little different? The bottom line is the factory default settings for AI servo are normally going to be fine with most moving subjects. But the cool thing with the 6D Mark II is that as your interests and demands grow, and as you start shooting more challenging moving subjects, these custom functions give you the ability to fine tune your AF system to match the situations and the subjects you're shooting. In this way, the 6D Mark II is a big step forward from older digital SLRs or if you're stepping up to it from a less expensive entry-level camera. In our next episode, we'll talk about the custom functions that affect focus point management.